Hi, this is Robert, and I'm back. Oh, let me get some light on. There. Yeah. I'm back with another uh, Halloween Horror Fest. This, I wanted to talk about the 80s and 90s, and I'm going to call this segment the Golden Age of Practical Effects. And uh, this is when... Uh, Makeup, puppetry, modeling, and uh, practical special effects all matured to the point where they could just uh, do some amazingly seamless illusions. And uh, I, God, there's there's so much ground to cover. It's hard to. Uh, I know I'm gonna leave someone out who's important, uh, but. Uh, I'm going to just uh, dive in. I should start uh, with Friday the 13th for makeup effects, but I'm going to jump right to uh, uh, the uh, climax of uh, the man's career, Tom Savini. I don't know. He's probably done better things than this, but uh, this one's always my favorite in terms of uh, Tom Savini's work. Tom Savini began... Uh, doing makeup effects for the Friday 13th movies. Uh, I only have the first one of those handy. But uh, he did uh, the effects for the last, uh, uh, or the uh, second and third of George Romero's great uh, dead trilogy. This is uh, the third movie, Day of the Dead. It's from, I believe, 1980. If I can find it. Never can find it when I look. But I'll post it on there. But uh, this has just some uh, uh, stunning effects in it. Uh, very creepy, very believable. Uh, and most of the effects were actually uh, directed by Tom Savini. Uh, I remember uh, meeting George Romero and saying I, I really like the... The, the one scene that gave me the biggest chills was the one where they uh, uh, take the zombie's head off with the uh, shovel. And uh, there's a shot of them running away in the background, and the zombie head is laying there with the eyes still looking around. Just very creepy effect. But uh, Savini went... Uh, it's no wonder that uh, uh, Tom Savini went on to doing directing chores uh, Romero trusted him so much that uh, Tom Savini did the direction on the uh, reboot, uh, Night of the Living Dead in Color, uh, which is also an excellent uh, film. But uh, this I can highly recommend, oh, any of the, the Romero trilogy. Uh, I'll even call it a quadrilogy because I don't think Land of the Dead is that bad either. But... Uh, they're just some amazing, how the hell did they do that effects in this? Uh, and uh, you can see the uh, makeups get more and more realistic uh, uh, as you go from uh, Dawn of the Dead to this film. Okay, Alien. Uh, it's a very well-known film, and what makes this movie is the uh, costume for the alien creature which was uh, designed by uh, the great artist Giger. Uh, what's his first name? I'll never find it. Uh, yep, I can't find it. <laughs> but the uh, alien, uh, it's, uh, they found also a very tall, skinny guy who adds to the illusion. But uh, it's just... Uh, not only uh, was the costume very good, but uh, uh, Ridley Scott, who directed this, just uh, did an amazing job of doing a uh, very scary haunted house in space movie with this alien creature popping out. And Scott's very uh, judicious about how much of it he shows. So, uh, very good movie. And during the late 70s, early 80s, we had two epic uh, uh, werewolf movies. My favorite uh, of the two is The Howling, though a lot of people prefer American Werewolf in London. 
both had a uh, very good uh, uh, makeup artist doing the practical effects. Uh, it was uh, Rick Baker doing uh, uh, the uh, uh, effects on uh, uh, Werewolf in London and God. God, I'm going to forget his name. Where is he? Uh... Mm. Disappointing. Because I, I should know that. Hang on a second. He... Don't look. Oh, yes, Rob Botton. Pardon. Glad I've caught it, you know. But he, uh, the effects in this, I think, are uh, as good as uh, Werewolf in London. Uh, they're perhaps a bit, oh, what's the word? They perhaps let the camera run on too long while you see the uh, werewolf uh, pulsating, but uh, they're, uh, this uh, movie, I think, has... Uh, this is how I conceptualize werewolves to look. I think they just did a great job. This is a very well done movie. It has a great sense of humor because of Joe Dante, but well worth watching. Okay, uh, Night of the Creeps has some uh, just neat. Uh, this is a fun movie. Uh, it's an homage to all the uh, alien invasion movies of the 50s. And it uh, has uh, some uh, brilliant uh, practical effects uh, with the little, uh, uh, they look like uh, leeches, little leech creatures running around. And uh, and. This is basically uh, Tom Atkins' movie. He plays a uh, very uh, disturbed, unhappy police uh, investigator, detective, who uh, lost his girlfriend to a maniac in the 50s. And uh, here in the 80s, uh, he's uh, just about to kill himself when uh, this uh, event with the, the uh, creeps comes about. But they're, uh, the creeps are these leech things that uh, they get you in, in your mouth and basically you die, you become a zombie, and you're walking around while these things breed and incubate in you. And then uh, you just kind of fall over, split open, and they all pour out of you. But uh, It's a pretty uh, grisly concept, but uh, there's a underlying humor in the movie that keeps it going. But uh, yeah. Atkins' line is thrill me, and uh, it's a thrilling movie. It's well worth watching. Okay, uh, the practical effects here in The Fly and the remake, or I should say sequel to The Fly. This is the, uh, the uh, 1980s version. Uh, one had Jeff Goldblum in it. And the effects were done by Chris Wallace. And I like the fly creature in the first movie, but it doesn't hold the candle to the one he did for the second movie. And if you haven't seen the fly too, it's kind of cool because it takes off uh, where the fly one ended uh, with, uh, oh, what's her name? Uh, um, Gina Davis character uh, giving birth. And... Uh, uh, the first thing that comes out is this hideous larvae looking thing that they kill, but the uh, second thing comes out is a very human looking baby. Unfortunately, she doesn't survive, and the, uh, the baby is raised uh, by the scientific think tank. Uh, uh, I forget the name of the corporation. I don't know if they have it here. But... Uh, 
anyway, he grows very quickly. The, the kid is played by uh, Eric Stoltz. And uh, within five years, he's basically a teenager. And uh, he's uh, manipulated by all sides, uh, especially the uh, evil boss of the corporation. Uh, the scientists uh, uh, mistrust and kind of uh, psychologically abuse him. He never really gets much support, but uh, he eventually uh, reaches maturity and starts to change. And there's a great line in here where uh, his uh, girlfriend goes, oh God, you've gotten worse. And he says, I'm not getting worse, I'm getting better. And, uh, but when he finally changes, it's pretty amazing. And there's a twist at the end that's quite good. Uh, again, like I said, the practical effects on it are, are just stunning. You wonder how they did it. How they, how did they make that thing walk around and <laughs> look so lifelike? I should have aliens in here because you'd say the same thing about the alien queen. But, uh, oh boy, there are just so many great practical effects movies from this era. Alien, Aliens, and Hellraiser had a tiny budget, but, uh, the effects they were able to do uh, just suggest so much uh, uh, hideous violence and damage to the human body that it's uh, 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 stunning. It's uh, mainly, uh, this is directed by Clive Barker, the uh, famous author who wrote uh, the Books of Blood and the uh, uh, short story that Hellraiser was based on. I think this is still the best of all those movies. I'm kind of a Hellraiser snob. I only like one and two. But the practical effects when Uncle Frank is uh, uh, starts uh, uh, returning to the, the uh, material plane and starts growing a body again are just pretty stunning for uh, considering it was done on just such a low budget. Uh, very impressive. And now I come to probably what is considered the uh, magnum opus, the masterpiece of the practical effects era. This is Rob Bottin again. Yeah, let's see. And uh, he uh, just does an amazing job uh, bringing the uh, effects that you see in this movie. There, this was well before CGI. Everything you see in this movie is real, including a uh, head. Uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, <laughs> there's this one scene that's just unbelievable. It's almost over the top. You're going, what the hell is going on here? Uh, the uh, They try and revive a fellow only to find out he's been uh, taken over by the alien thing, which... Uh, can mimic any shape it wants. Anyway, uh, he's uh, trying to apply a defibrillator to the uh, uh, man, and instead the man's chest opens up into a pair of huge jaws, bites the uh, doctor's hands off, and <laughs> which uh, kills the doctor. The doctor falls back, the body opens up again, and tentacles start just pouring out and whipping all over the place. Uh, a head comes out of the chest and starts looking around while the main head on the body, oh yeah, they first uh, they uh, get a flamethrower and, and start burning up the thing. But the, uh, the original head on the body starts, uh, st uh, the neck starts stretching and the head uh, slips off the edge of the table and uh, drops down to the floor where it grows uh, uh, spider legs and starts walking away and it's just <laughs> you're just going oh my god how the hell did they do that it's just amazing uh, you know I can't say enough good things about this uh, the effects in this movie uh, and uh, the thing about practical effects is they look real because they are real I mean they had to actually make that thing and then film it. They couldn't just, uh, you know, 
uh, manipulate pixels in a computer to get it to look halfway real. But uh, the thing definitely gets my uh, top vote for uh, practical effects of the era. Probably number two would be this movie. This We had a remake of The Thing here. This is the remake of The Blob. This uh, had a screenplay written by Frank Darabont of Shawshank Redemption fame, also went on to do the Walking Dead series. But uh, this is an excellent uh, movie. If you haven't seen it, it's a lot of fun. has a lot of great horror tropes in it. And they just uh, find uh, innovative ways for the thing to, uh, or the uh, blob to uh, eat people. One guy gets sucked down a drain. Uh, the, uh, I think the, the most uh, amazing one is the, uh, the phone booth one. I'm not going to go much further than that. But uh, it moves. Uh, it's pretty unpredictable. You're always guessing what's going on. So uh, just a cool movie. And again, uh, oh yeah, uh, we talked about uh, Aliens. Uh, and uh, the effects on that were done by, uh, uh, where is he, where is he, where is he, uh, Stan Winston, yeah. And he went on to do the effects and direct this movie, Pumpkinhead, which if you haven't seen, Pumpkinhead is just one of the best demons ever realized in a movie, if not the... There were uh, two sequels. Uh, neither really has the, uh, the, the uh, impact of this original one. Part of that is because Lance Henriksen is so good in this original. Uh, his son is accidentally killed by some uh, motocross bikers, and uh, he vows revenge. So he goes to the local witch, and she raises a demon, Pumpkinhead. And... Uh, Pumpkinhead proceeds to kill the kids, the motocross kids, one by one. Uh, uh, what uh, Lance Henriksen didn't count on is he's uh, psychically tied to the demon, so he's seeing everything it does. In the end, he's trying to stop it before it kills everyone, including uh, the uh, a uh, uh, young girl who was part of the group but never participated in uh, the motocross riding. But the, the demon is, there he is, he's just excellent. And they do a great job of making it look like there can't be a man in that. Uh, from the, the feet, I guess he's standing on some kind of stilts, but it's hard to see. Uh, it just looks like some uh, bizarre demonic uh, anatomy. This is a later one, uh, Jeepers Creepers. Uh, again, we have a, a pretty neat uh, monster in this. This was done, I believe, in 2001, so this is very late. This probably doesn't count since I'm, uh, we're outside my target uh, pair of decades. But again, they just did a great makeup job on uh, the creature, the creeper. And... Uh, I like this movie a lot. Uh, I think it's very well done how you slowly realize that this isn't just some uh, crazy old guy with a weird truck chasing people around. Uh, you slowly realize this thing isn't human. And uh, uh, the, the reveal is really quite good. I, I think it was a very well done movie. Uh, sadly, the... Uh, uh, director uh, uh, had uh, some um, molestation charges against him. The Funhouse is a Toby Hooper movie, which is quite good. There's a uh, uh, the story is that the uh, fellow running the Funhouse had uh, uh, two uh, 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 deformed children. One didn't live, and they put him on display in the freak show. And the one that does live is helping him run the funhouse. But uh, 
he wears a Frankenstein mask all the time for reasons that you learn about halfway through the movie when this uh, amazing, uh, hideous makeup is revealed. But uh, it's a great movie. Anyway, that will do it. I think that's about 10 movies. But uh, hopefully this gives you an idea of uh, just some of the, the uh, movie magic that was done with practical effects in the 80s and 90s. Anyway, uh, hopefully I can get this posted before Halloween for your enjoyment. And uh, uh, thanks for watching. Have a happy Halloween.